The following program is a project of the students of Mofo's Training for Television and Film, a project of the Mohammed Amin Foundation, supported in part by a grant from Open Society Initiative for East Africa. The views expressed in this program are not necessarily the views of the Mohammed Amin Foundation or Open Society Initiative for East Africa. Zamani haki zetu hatukujua Umepikia wakati wako nami kuchukua hatua Haki na ukweli tumekuwa tukililia Waze kwa vijana Chukua hatua Let's give it up for the band. Yeah. Villagers, what's up? And yes, we have an international superstar sitting right with us. Get up for Zola. Yeah. Welcome, bro. Oh, what a show, what a show. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Jimmy Gathu. And I'm Anne Mitari Mumina. Welcome to the Hatua Show. This show is about being aware, taking responsibility, and last but not least, taking action to create positive change in our society. Hatua is about you and me That's right. and the role That's we right. can play in creating a better future for this country. That's right, Anne. Today's show is about something that has become increasingly commonplace in our society, child abuse. 58,000 cases of abuse are recorded annually in Kenya and over 70% of them result in death. Many times the children are abused by people who are supposed to be taking care of them. Why has our society become so violent? Stay tuned to the Hatua show as we delve into the issue of child abuse. Hang on, be right back. Welcome back. You know, a child is a source of joy for communities, but sometimes caregivers take advantage of their position of power and physically abuse the very people they are supposed to protect. Which is very do, very, very, very sad. Mm -hmm. Why do adults who should know the difference between right and wrong do this? Let's watch the feature on child abuse before we start looking for answers to this question. Physical punishment, no. That one, it causes damage to the body. You've stolen a ten shilling from me or something, and I beat you, like I burn your fingers. That's extreme. A parent can kill the kid because she, he or he, she will do it in a loving way. Burning a kid, or even cutting them, or hitting them to a point of probably leaving injuries on them, that is not love. That is torture. Baba, 
gift. Nipate kama nisha chamuka. There are physical abuse cases, abandonment, neglect, children being burnt or someone setting a dog on a child. Oh, mama, ilikuwa na kunyima chakula? Eh, yeah. anatoka tu asubuhi, yeah. anakuja jioni. Yeah. Dab data siku mgini jioni akikuja ataleta tu mandazi mbili. Yeah. Sa ingini hata atakuja tu na, na chakula za hoteli tunakula. Na kesho asubuhi tu nitaenda shule. Mm, mbona kichwa kwa hapa na pengine hakuna nyanya? This is a center for children who have been uh, abused, those who have been abandoned, those who have been neglected, and those who have been abandoned by HIV AIDS. We are targeting more, more such schools to ensure that the whole of Kibera and other areas whereby child abuse cases or the areas we are working, children, are protected. Poverty has really driven uh, some of uh, our people to the wall. Many people are poor. We find that there is a lot of frustrations. So there is tendency of uh, people projecting that frustration to the children. Mm. As we are looking into how can we solve, I mean, how can we help this child, we are also looking at the abuser so that we don't have these cases whereby we call recidivism, whereby it, it reoccurs again. Uh, the support that we want the government to give us is dealing with the abusers. Everybody has a responsibility to, to intervene in case of a child abuse. This is there are many centers, very many centers that work with uh, tormented children or abused children. So whenever you see that child being abused, don't hesitate and don't take your time watching what will happen tomorrow. <laughs> A child has a right to live. All children should be protected from any form of abuse and exploitation. The child has no right to be abused in any way. They physically abuse us and denied us basic rights. Finally, we started roaming endlessly, far and near the neighborhood, looking for food. And it's very sad that somebody obviously has power, you know, who obviously has that opportunity or the capacity to make uh, somebody's life better, uses that power to destroy a person who is obviously very innocent. It's unacceptable. 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 We have a top, we have a face in as far as our topic is concerned. Let's give a round of applause. Her name is Cynthia Kabata. Cynthia is our future member of parliament. <laughs> How are you? Fine. How old are you? And I know you go to Gatoto Primary School. Tell us about who you are. I know you're a student, but what do you do? What do you do in other, when you're not in school? When you're not in school. When I am not in school, I help my parents. I used to walk around to see how children are doing mm -hmm. because I know there's many children who discriminate their children, so I walk around to see the children. Nice. I told you, future member of parliament, Makofi Kwake. I told you. <laughs> That's it. Now, Cynthia. Um, Siji kama, kama uwe usha ikuwa, usha ikupigwa na mtu ama mtu ambayo alikonesha madharao, mtu mzima ama pengine ni mtu ambayo najua. Have you been in that situation before, pengine mtu amikudharao ama? Uh-uh. Uh -huh. So why, why do you speak for other children ambayo hawa medhulumiwa? Mbona unazungumza kwa niyaba yao? Mi uzungumza kwa niyaba yao kwa sababu ya mi wana venye watoto wanateseka na hakuna action yinachukuliwa. Sasa mi nikona, in case mi nikiongea, 
hawa wazazi wengine wanaweza sikiza watoto na sauti yetu inaweza kuwa strong enough venye wazazi wanaweza chukulia hii kitu kiwa serious mm -hmm. na, na marafiki zako ni, ni au dhulumi wa kivipi uh, kupigwa klasini au pengine kupigwa na wazazi wao ni au dhulumi wa kivipi ndio ikakufanya ika ukawa na hiyo huzuni sana kwa ndani acha nizungumzie kusawa marafiki zangu unajua kuna rafiki yangu mwingine my really best friend wow okay. ali rap wangu na sasa because alikuwa anga best friend yangu venye tu alikuwa ananiambia venye ali rap wa no hiyo mtu venye alikuwa anga mitumwa na mama yake akarepiwa hiyo uchungu nikaiona ni kama tu mimi mwenyewe kwa sababu we are the same age ni msichana tu kama mimi tuko darasa moja na sasa sasa akirepiwa kwa sababu ni rafiki yangu ni kama pia mimi nimerepiwa what has been the impact you have i know you once had a meeting and you you made a recital in front of the vice president what has been the the response to the work that you're doing as a child activist sa zingine naona wazazi wana improve kuna wazazi wengine yenye wanaitake kiwa serious lakini si wazazi wote wengine 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 wanasema anga tu wete bwende ukafanye kazi ama wete bwenda shuleni ukitoka shule unakuja unafanya kazi unalala kitu saa kumi na tena unalala yani kitu saa sita ukiamka unaamka saa kumi tena unaendelea na kazi kwa sababu mwalimu ajui shida yako ukienda shuleni uko late unapanishiwa sasa hiyo punishment ukipewa hata u concentrate kwa darasa ukikuja na balast mzazi anakuchapa mwalimu pia na kupanish swali yangu ya mwisho um, Cynthia ni vile leo mwana sasa hiyo shida ya wazazi na na, na, na walimu na, na marafiki zako eh uh, tuchuke kama sasa unazungumza kitu moja important about, uh, kupanishua, uh, mtu akikosea, mtu akikosea, akikosea, kwa, kwa kitu about kupanishwa klasini mtu akikosea mtoto akikosea akikosea mzazi wake ama akikosea mtu mzima unaona lazima apanishiwe ama asipanishiwe azungumziwe tu ama unajua kuna venye mtoto anaweza zungumziwa na akose kusikia lakini sasa ukiona mtoto wako unamzungumzia na anakata kusikia unaweza mdiscipline lakini si ati nile kumchapa excess mpaka anafura macho anaanza kama ulimchuna alama zinaanza kuonekana yani unamdiscipline tu ile kiasi ile kiasi mm. okay swali so, ya mwisho mami ukiwa uki, ukimaliza skuli eh uwe mtu mkubwa kama mimi mzima kama mimi Kiswahili likuja na Arabu. Anyway, um, utakuwa uta, utaingia bunge, utakuwa unazungumzia masuala ya watoto zaidi ama utakuwa daktari kama kila mtu? Uh, mimi ndakuwa lawyer na pia ndiingia parliament. Hey, hey, na... hey, hey. uh -huh. na pia si ati ndacha kuzungumzia watoto kwa sababu ya watoto ni the next leaders kwa sababu mzazi anaweza dharau mtoto akifikiria hata wewe kwa mkubwa ama akisema bethe tema kwa mkubwa na kwanga nimekufa yani sasa nataka kuzungumzia wazazi kabisa kama hata nisikia nikiwa mtoto sasa pia uone naendelea na naendelea na niendelee bakeles kwenye wataacha ama bakeles kwenye mtoto Host wardrobe courtesy of True Words For the fashion forward man and woman shop at True Words only at the Sarit Center True Words for the love of fashion Welcome back to the Hatu show our topic of discussion today is child abuse physical abuse is the most common common form of abuse in Kenya now we seek to find out tonight on the Hatu show why this happens is it because uh, for example a caregiver goes too far when meting out punishment discipline is important in society isn't it an issue of relativity based on social bringing and culture we're about to find out these are some of the questions that we that we are asking today where did this start? Why does it happen? Danica, we have got Danica in the audience. Let's give a round of applause for Danica. Danica is a senior program officer um, with CLAN, and CLAN is a child rights, human rights organization. Tell us about your work and maybe give us some of the answers to this question. 
Why does it happen? Where do we draw the line between discipline and child abuse? I would say the parents who, or caregivers who mainly abuse their children physically were abused the same way by their own parents. Well, we usually try and talk to them, do community awareness, talk to the parents and let them know that discipline, like what Cynthia has said, there's a line where you can draw this. I'm just wondering, Danik, and, and perhaps a, a lot of uh, professionals, and of course members of the audience who are here, um, you said something very important, Danica, that it, it stems back to parenthood. How are we disciplined when we were young? And is that the only way we know how? So the question is, where does it stem from and how do you correct that? Because <clears throat> I have an issue with us, and, and I think the, the Children's Act states that uh, discipline in school, or punishment, or caning in school is prohibited. I don't know whether, whether, whether there is a problem. We're now breeding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, we're breeding a community that can now stand up and say, don't touch me. If you touch me, I'll take you to court. Maybe what you're asking, Jimmy, is, is there a place for, for discipline in schools by teachers? Is there a place? Is there a place? Do you think Joki so? We've got Jokimo Hoho in the house. Joki? <laughs> well, welcome, Joki. I mean, um, um, in the quest, of course, to protect our very beloved children, have we lost the essence of discipline? Um, I would say probably we have, or maybe we vent our own frustrations on the ones who can't hit back. And um, for us coming from the private sector, the corporate world, and why we formed our own foundation, which is now foundation, and it was very much like what Cindy is saying, that we, there's got to be a time when you say the action is now. And for us, what we try to do is to support the likes of, the, to have partnership with such agencies like her own, Clan, uh, Koval, even FIDA and all that, so that we give them more uh, we give them uh, more resources to be able to reach the people on the ground, whether it's on awareness and so on. So we do believe like, in, our found, in the NOW Foundation that yes, children may be obeying, the discipline is getting to be abused, and it's really the, own, the society venting its own frustrations on the hapless little things. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Society venting. <laughs> is, is that true? Do you think mm -hmm. there is a place for discipline? Yeah. Yeah. There is? Gentleman at the back, fourth row from the back. Tell us, is there a place for discipline? I'd like, uh, tell us your name and what you think. Uh, I'm so Peter. Then. Peter, I'm a I'm so Peter. I'm a, I'm a student at uh, ESMS, East African School of Media Studies, and uh, I do believe there's a place for discipline. I believe I am where today because of discipline. Good, yeah. <laughs> Someone agrees with me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know some parents may overstep the line, but uh, there's some things you have, you have to look at. Okay, there's some estates. Uh, okay, let's say in Eastland, there's no way you can tell me that uh, you're going to raise a child in that particular place without using the cane. Uh -huh. But there's a line that has to be drawn. You can't and should this be line. extended to schools and homes as well? Definitely. Okay. Any, yes, I have an opinion. The lady in green, tell us your name. My name is Irene Nyamu, and Hi, I work Irene. for Child Hi, Line. Welcome, welcome to the <laughs> Thank you. Um, if I can just uh, give my 50 cents worth of uh, Which is thinking important. about uh, discipline and punishment. Yes. I think there are two different issues here. There is the issue of discipline and there is punishment. If somebody has um, um, done something wrong, there is the purpose of either inflicting pain, and that's punishment, or you can correct the person, in which case you're meeting out discipline. So what we need to aim for in the schools is discipline, where you make the child understand what you did is wrong and therefore you need to make or to take corrective measures. And you can do that by you know, denying um, the child other pleasures that they would simply have enjoyed. For instance, if they keep, um, I, the children get punished for all sorts of reasons in the school and you don't have to, to beat the child if the child loves basketball, during basketball, you say, you came 20 minutes late to school. So you have to make up for that time by staying in school, in class, when everybody else is going for basketball. So there are alternatives to punishment. Let's not subject children to physical abuse. I don't, I, I, okay, oh, I guess, oh, oh, ah. Now, you see, I, I, like my friend, 
Stephen, that was, was that your name? So it's Peter. You know, I grew up in the same Eastlands, and oh my goodness, either you became a boxer or a karateka or, or, or you die. I did You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And, and for me, and that's why for me, when, when I'm talking about discipline, I say, in fact, put it back in schools. In this regard, if you tell me, because of coming to class late or 20 minutes late, you won't play basketball, that's it? That, that's 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 anyone a, that's who a holds discipline? Jimmy's view? No, seriously, is is that it? Is that it? So I won't be punished because of twenty minutes. So I won't play basketball. So and I got twenty minutes. Tomorrow I'll play basketball. Anyone? But hold I on, hold on, hold on. Uh. If you if you if you use the rod, I mean, come on. Let's 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 be sincere. You and I were brought up in that era where kiboko likwani lazima, lazima ukama to kiboko ndo juhe. This is wrong and this is right. Why are we, why are we, why are we um, uh, uh, removing that? Or, or, or what am I I'm looking for, that strong word? Um, why are we denying our children of this age the beauty of what we had before? OK. It was beautiful. Tell us your name. I mean, come on, I'm not a bad guy. Am I a bad guy? I'm Peter Lekerian. Peter, karibu sana, Peter. I support uh, discipline of children, right. but to a measure. Okay. As a parent, first, I've got four kids. I love them. I would talk to them. They would understand me. And if there is a problem, I would be able to sort them out. But if they do excesses, I would try and use a cane, but I will not say that. And I would still extend, talk to them and tell them, should you do things in school, still the teacher will do as I would do. But more of children to understand themselves come from the parent. So the parent is the role model, whereby it starts from the house, and when they go to school, still in school they will do as they do at home. So if they know that they are not supposed to do wrong things at, uh, at places, Still, they would not do at home. But is it, is it, is, are we saying that teachers are not parents? So why shouldn't they be given the no, same no. responsibilities as no. we do? Teachers. You know, I mean, for example, I am in the office uh, in my industry, I believe, yes. so nine to about nine o'clock in yes. the night. Yes. Okay. And I'm the one who meets that punishment to my children. And I have three daughters who I love dearly, two bits. But I have, you know, I will, I will, I will use the rod on them. But then when they go to school, I have given that responsibility to that teacher who have said, apart from imparting knowledge, when they go offline, no. be a parent. As, OK, as parents, what we don't really do is we do not have a lot of faith in teachers. And we do not extend a shaking hand to them. But These are people who are with their children for look, about eight look, hours look. a day. What, what you need to understand is they spend most of the time with these children. And once we understand the load of the teachers, give them the go ahead to look after the children, we will get our children at home in the evening the best behaved. So we must support the teachers to look after our children and do their best for us. The gentleman here has something to say. You have to just wait for the microphone. Tell us your name and then whether you agree with me or not. I'm Gibson Amasaki. Gibson, we for Gibson. Welcome. I Gibson. tend to believe in any organization where the rules and regulations, Good one. discipline, Lazima. must be still. Kabisa. Because it's a tendency. Even in schools? Exactly. Even in schools? Yeah. Good. Because it's a tendency of a human being to veer off the right track. Okay? And so there must be a way of bringing this person back to the right track. But the most important thing, whereby, the most important thing for discipline is to make that person understand why wrong is bad and why right is good. And, and do you think by talking to them it would help? Uh, Danica, who you know, I, I admire uh, immensely, says you need to, after age of age 10, can sit down and nego with a 10-year-old. You can talk, provided if at, at long last, the main goal is for this person to understand that wrong is bad and right is good. That's the main goal. Oh, where I come from, man, I'm telling you, it's okay. a bit tough. I see, I so, see yeah. two hands no, Thank you, let's, let's right give him. Yes. Make me understand, because for me, I think we are losing something. For me, I think, you know, I was brought up by my mom single-handedly, and she used to whack us. And she was her height, by the way. You know, and I'm, to this day, my mom says, Jimmy, oh, me, I'm there. So are we, are we losing that beauty of discipline that we had back in the day? Why is it wrong now? My name is uh, Jen Moyanga. I work for the Department of Children's Services. I'm here representing my director. Very kind. Now, I would like to differ a bit uh, with Mr. Gatu. How many times were you beaten 
over one mistake which you repeated on and over and over again. The beating to you, if you are told no playing in water, nobody told you why you should not play in water. When exactly. it rains, you are there in the mud the bar, Sana, playing. Yeah. Because you are not told why it is wrong to play, even in raw sewer. But sit your daughter down 10 years and tell her, sweetheart, look, playing in sewer, sewerage water has this effect on your life. You don't have to bash her. Sit, tell these kids, as my friend has said, sit, tell them why wrong is wrong. If it's punishment, let the child understand. I'm being punished because I was told playing in raw sewer, it's wrong. I've gone ahead, played in it. If I come and get a bashing, that child will know they have been beaten because they played in dirty my, water. My, let's give a round of applause. My point exactly, ma. My point exactly. You see, there was something lacking back in the day. You know, you go out and play, you come home, you're whacked. You know, but now we have learned from that mistake. So we're saying not only will we need to bash our children, and oh, bash is a bad word. Yeah. Discipline, caning, sorry, forgive me, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's cane our children, but let's tell them why. Okay, let's tell them why we are caning them. That's the negotiation I'm talking about. But don't just say, oh, in a new sifanya, you can do it. Then this child will wonder, okay, the best mommy can do or daddy can do is tell me not to go and play. I'll do it. But Next thing you know, you go you to your neighbor's house for dinner, that child is going to come and grab that, that cloth that has, that has dinner all over and pull it down. What will mommy say? Oh, si fanya evil tena. But Jimmy, I'll tell you one thing. Why the issue of discipline still remains the biggest problem for parents Why? is this. Why? You are too busy running after money. You have no time for I your agree. children. I agree. I agree, I yeah? agree. So when I'm agree. telling you to sit and correct your daughter, where do you get the time from if you are going to the, to the house at nine? So what is the solution? What is the solution? The solution is, can parents put their priorities right? You see, the thing is this. Granted, we are busy. I mean, times have changed, man. Economics have changed. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm asking, shouldn't we take that aspect of discipline back to the people who are also parents like us? Give it back to the teachers. Say, listen, my child needs discipline sometimes. This is how I do it. We can't do that. We can't do that. Young do man that? in the suit. All right. My name is Johnson Simiu. Johnson Simiu, Karibu Ban. And you're looking sharp, man. Asante. And I'm a member of the World Youth Alliance. We have to understand that the family is a school of deeper humanity. All right. So, if we are going to get that kind of notion and we are going to develop that in our children and you know when we talk of that we are going to talk of things like having that unconditional love and when it develops in the children you you, you know the child will just start doing the way we think should behave like look at cynthia there she you know she's she's like even my role model she's younger than me but she's my role model <laughs> and i believe I believe it's so because she got that attention from the parents. Now, when we get that kind of thing from the family, then we'll not have even trouble going to talk about the teachers because teachers also have families. And from the family, we get the society. And now, because the family gives rise to the society, we shall be giving rise to generations. So I believe if we get that as parents, I'm not a parent yet, but I've done that, I've used that, I've disciplined my nephews and my nieces, they are doing very well. There are no problems to the teachers. They are okay even to their society. Thank you. Thank you. And we are joined by Zola. Yeah, let's give Zola a second. Zola. Superstar Zola! Zola. Welcome, Zola. Zola, right now we know there's legislation in South Africa forbidding corporal punishment in schools, in, in, at home, totally. Tell us about that. Has there been an impact? Was there an uproar? Has it made a difference? I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm listening, and we got different rules in my country because actually it's created a bit of a frustration from the parents now that corporal punishment has banned, and a lot of parents now have to get creative on how to discipline a child, you know? And uh, I did hit my daughter once, and I think I don't have to, have to hit her anymore because immediately I do this, she understands that that hand will get warm, you know? So whether we're at the mall or somewhere, she want to go pick up things whether she's not supposed to. But I, I suppose there's a lot to do also with the teacher and the parent becoming friends and understanding that most black parents Parents have to work for extra hours for those kids to eat. So we all have to get creative as a society. Okay. When we come back, you'll tell us about solutions for the perpetrators. We'll be right back on a tour. Hang on. Back 
to the Hatua show. Drawing the line between discipline and physical abuse is difficult for some, but even more difficult for the children they abuse. Yes, but should we do without discipline at all to prevent child abuse? Zola, you were talking to us. Um, how can we, as, as, as a community, as a people, um, learn lessons from you and what you have to share? And how can we get involved in preventing child abuse? Uh, well, for one thing, I'm not really here to teach. I'm, I'm really here to learn myself, well, we you know, share, because we have to share, we have to to share, share. these things. In uh, back home in South Africa, there's, there's more creative ways of disciplining a child, especially in a school environment, because corporal punishment has been banned. And then teachers have a lot of a great deal of a connection with the parents as well. So you might do something wrong at school and get punished at home. You know, so, oh, yeah, oh. so, in a way. Oh, that works, yeah. that works, and, yeah. and I think also we, we have to admit that as Africans, we are a bit displaced. I think half the naughtiness of kids comes from the hip-hop videos, which is like another foreign influence, you oh, know. Oh, you put yourself <laughs> it smack gets, in the middle. Yeah, it gets very complicated. So we, we need to put ourselves in a way, I think it starts as, as well with being patriotic as Africans and teaching our kids that, teaching them the art of the elders and the hierarchy of how you behave as a child, you know, as opposed to letting them watch TV, those hip-hop videos, all the time. It's like they live in Africa, but the mind is elsewhere. Now, with the richer countries, the so-called civilized countries, it gets complicated because the kids can actually stand up and walk away from a teacher out of school and a teacher can do nothing. And a child can walk back into class being pregnant in November and be allowed to write. This is the law in my country. You know, so it's, it's gone to a point whereby a parent and a teacher almost doesn't have rights anymore and kids can do whatever they want, you know? But then again, if you spend intimate time talking to a child, growing with a child, understanding the teacher and the parent and the child and let them all get involved in what we call the school governing body, which is members of the parents, the teachers, and, and, and um, the spiritual leaders around the community, then you get a, a sense whereby everybody gets, they feel they want to participate. And then the absentia of being naughty sort of like leaves because you, you fear the fear of disappointing the people around you. Nice. Thanks, thank Zola. you. Thank you, Zola. One of the things sometimes that does happen, Danica, maybe you could tell us about this. Are there parents who abuse their children? You we saw in the feature pouring hot water on your child, and they don't realize that this is child abuse. This is how I was punished. This is how I will punish you. Does that ever happen? It's very rare to find an abuser who does not know what they are doing. It's very rare. Very rare. Like the case which we've just seen on the, on the video, that man knew what he was doing. There was, there was also, what about women? Sorry, I just asked. There was also a stepmother who, you know, who was involved. Do they all, even the mothers, they're not as sympathetic? Would no, you say? they're not as sympathetic. Sometimes we find, we actually find cases where the mother knows what is happening. She knows that this has been happening since this child has been this age, but does nothing about it, does not even report it. And what does, if for example, a case is reported, what is the course of justice? Well, once it's reported, uh, and let's say we take up the case, we will make sure that the abuser has been arrested and all our papers are right, take it to court. Maybe and for the see. benefit of the audience and our viewers at home, what, would you be, what are some of the things you would be charged with as a perpetrator? What are the different offenses that you'd be charged with? Causing bodily, grievous bodily harm? Yeah, this one. Assault. Me, I would like to know what's minimum sentence? Life, if you ban a child, do you go in for five months, five years, or 50 years? It's not less than seven. Less than seven? It's not less than seven, depending on what took place, how old the child is. Isn't yeah. that, I mean, you've scarred a child for life. Seven years doesn't cut it. I know, but that's our penal code, and that's some of the things the state should do. Right next to you, we have a young lady. Um, I'm coming from South Africa also. All right. Yeah, you know, it's scaring me. You know, you're running as parents, especially from this country. I think you are running away from the fact that you need to communicate with your, your child. child. You know, what's happening? Once, I never knew the truth. Ne? I'm not saying it's me, but to those kids out there. I never knew the truth. Ne? You, prote you, 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 you pretended that you were protecting me. Ne? Mm -hmm. You told me not to go out at night. You told me not to walk with boys. But when I asked, my reward was getting beaten. But I never knew the truth. I lamented to go out to search for truth. My reward was getting pregnant. So it brings back to the fact that parents are running away, From that you need to communicate. Amazing. Let's give a round of applause. So I mean, this side has been very quiet. I'm a bit concerned. I mean, 
In as far as yes. Uh, my name is Titus Nyangwecha. I'm a student at uh, East African School of Media Studies. Okay, first, I want to disagree with the lady who has just talked. No, th the parents, those parents and whoever who abuse the right of child or who abuse child, in some cases you realize they do this, they abuse them unwillingly. They do not know exactly what they do. Hmm? This is because of special reasons like yeah. mental problems. You realize some parents suffer from psychological torture so that they just find themselves taking hot water and pouring them on, the, on their kids, oh, even pressure. You will forgive me, man. I, I, I will disagree with you. But okay. that's not, let me keep going. Uh, uh, keep your question on. Eh? I'm going to come to you. Allow me to disagree with mental issues. I, the uh, your, your name, mommy? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Esther. Esther, let's give a round of applause. Can you Esther? I want to say that the percentage of parents that could be in that category are very few, and I think many parents would be knowing what they are doing when they are abusing our children. And I really want to say that it boils down to dysfunctional families, back to the family and back to the bonding between parents and their children. Cynthia. And I, and I okay, sorry. sorry I finish, just wanted yes. to say something about something that uh, Gadu had Gadu said, said earlier. earlier. I agree that times have changed. And I agree that we have to go out there and work and spend a lot of time out there. But just like we use our diaries and prioritize and give time to other activities in our lives, mm -hmm. I think we are failing our children because we are not giving time to our children. And I don't think it's about quantity. It's about quality time. And quality is not necessarily, it is even if it's a it short time. Yeah, it has to quality. matter. Cynthia. What hatua, neza chukua hatua gani, so that we see child abuse comes to an end? Unajua, ima mbea child abuse tumeongea, tumeongea, lakini wazazi wengine watakangi kusikia. Lakini, the only way enye tunezafanya, ni mzazi ya kipatika na ame abuse mtoto, anafaa shikwe, na siya tia kae, afai kukati miaka saba kutirimka, anafaa kae, around 15 ya zuko, kwa sababu ya, Izo asira zitakuja kwa sababu mzazi alistakiwa hizo asira zenye alikuwa nazo jela atarudi nazo sasa kwa mtoto na sasa kama alikuwa ngame amemgonga na amemwagilia maji moto sasa atamuingiza ndani ya maji moto You know what I have, I have you know what I'm saying Okay, Zola, for your benefit, you didn't hear what she said? What she said is seven years doesn't cut it, and I agree with you, mommy. High five. <laughs> I agree. Seven years doesn't cut it because if that guy comes back home, no, this time he won't pour hot water on the child. He will take the child and put the child in hot water. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a question for government. Um, somebody said, you know, this mental, this, you know, mental uh, psychological problems. Some say poverty, mini skinny. So you know, you're so frustrated, you want to just met out your anger on this child. Those are it's, some it's, of the misconceptions exactly. about, about so, violence. So does, what does government do? And, 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 and if government is doing nothing uh, in as far as um, uh, you know, arresting and punishing these perpetrators, what can the community do in as far as legislation? If, if Danica and I agree that seven years doesn't cut it, what can we do, me now, me as Jimmy? Can I, what can I do to make sure that my fellow father doesn't burn her child to death? I, I think what we are doing is trying to, through our district networks and in partnership with our partners, we've really tried to go out and, uh, especially in schools, support the NGOs and the civil society in the establishment of our child rights clubs. Our district children officers have been very, very instrumental on that. We've also been able, through the support of partners, been able to train, especially CBOs, on the Children Act, because we believe it's through people knowing the provisions in law that exist, that they can be able to protect children. And even as we talk of physical abuse, there's one other abuse that we are so silent about, mm -hmm. neglect, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah? Jimmy, you're here, you're working, but your children are going hungry, and they know daddy works. Okay, she's giving an example, that's not true. She's giving an example. Yeah? <laughs> so, sorry, yeah, sorry. And, 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 and we're here, we, we, there are lots of initiatives that we can do, and we have to be involved, I believe. We have to be involved. We have to get involved. And for us, I would say, the worst a children officer can go through, it's like, for example, in January when, like now when the Form 1 intake has been taken, has been done. You find a child is here with 400 marks. And the father comes and tells him, I differed with my wife, let her take care of the child. 
and maybe this could be just a housewife. This is somebody on salary and employment. You know our judicial system, and my fellow, my friend from Clan will bear me witness. By the time you take this matter to court to have this fellow it's pay been fees, a year. it's a year this child has lost out. So I think for us as Kenyans, is we start taking the initiative. We have to chukua hatua. No. We, we have, have to, to say no. Lazima tuchukue hatua. We have to go on a break. I know it's a great show, but we have to meet at the crossroads when we come back. Hang on. Welcome back to the tour show. Child abuse destroys children for good, continuing the cycle forever. It is our responsibility as future and current caregivers to ensure that we do not cross the line between physical abuse and discipline. Let us meet at the crossroads. We must not forget the fact that there are obvious cases of abuse. Burning a child or sexually molesting them is clearly abuse. If you know a child who is being abused, report it immediately to the ch child line or your nearest police station. Children are our future, you know. So let us take responsibility to ensure that they grow up to be responsible <coughs> and disciplined citizens without harming them. That is my hatua. I hope you all have different initiatives that you can be part of. There are many, many initiatives that you can be part of to stop in fact, child violence. In fact, in fact, there's one, you know. I think she said that, you know, legislation, it takes forever to take these perpetrators to court. You can tell your member of parliament that when they go to parliament, we don't know about minimum reforms if it's not helping us. Yeah, these are things that we need to harakisha so that these guys can be taken to court quickly. I'm a CEO. CEO ni atua. Sawa, I'm a coffee for you, man. I don't know what your hatua is at home. I hope you can come up with one. I'm Anne Mitaru Mumina. And I'm Jimmy Gathu, and this is Cynthia. Cynthia who? Kavata. Kavata. Thanks for joining us. Good evening. Have a nice one. Tangu zamani haki zetu hatukujua umefikia wakati wako nami kuchukua hatua hakina ukweli tumekuwa tukililia wazee kwa vijana chukua hatua 